Right, we're here today at the Garden Hill Cottage Gallery in East Hampton to talk about the photography of Alfred F. Ross, who is not only a fabulous photographer, but he's also an environmentalist. He's lived on Georgia Capon for most of his life. As you can see in my gallery, you can see that most of these photographs have to do with uh, the, the act of Georgia Capon and the areas around them, okay? The uh, Alfred Ross has never had a photography show before until now, which has been, it's been very, very successful. Uh, his photographs are, they're, they're not only uh, beautiful, but they're also educational. As we can see here in Alfred's ph photography, we take a look at Georgia Cove. Georgia Cove at one time had, was built up with a lot of Phragmites, and it was actually uh, it, almost, uh, you were unable to move around in there. And we see the, the Blumenthal cat boat, family cat boat here uh, in, in the cove. And right to the left of this is where Alfred actually lives. He lives off of uh, Cove Hollow Farm Road. But we take a look here at the image of Alfred. We see the type of camera he uses and the type of lens he uses. And I just read, since he's not here to speak for himself, just something he's written here. He says, for the photographer, the zen light pleasure of waiting alone on Georgia Beach on a cold winter morning, for the sun to rise of standing perfectly still, hardly breathing. Knee deep on the edge of Georgia Capon to wait for a dragonfly to return to a certain pose provides an opportunity to center oneself in a space on our planet, floating somewhere in the solar system, somewhere in the universe. And I guess what Alfred is saying is that, you know, he, he patiently waits for the subjects to get the exact uh, image that he's looking to convey to the public. And if we look at this particular picture, it's, it's one of the things about Alfred's work is he uses various papers in his printing process. He does all his own printing. And so if we look at this particular picture, it's almost like a 19th century pastel, an oil pastel. If we look at the pastel -y colors and the way that the paper picks up uh, the use of his ink, and it really is Un unusual in a photograph and that you can get so much depth and so much detail in, his, in these photographs. One of our favorite images here at the Gardner Mill Cottage Gallery for this exhibition, which is sponsored by the Friends of the Georgia Capon Foundation, is this photograph of the green heron, which you often, often don't see out here. And we can see we use this in our, our catalog uh, that we posted for this exhibition. But again, we talk about a little bit about the paper that Alfred Ross uses. And in this particular case, he uses a, a archival textured paper. It's like a watercolor paper. And if we look closely, we get great uh, figurative image right here. I mean, it's very precise. But meanwhile, we take a look here and we see the way the paper has absorbed the ink, which gives it a feeling of more of a watercolor than, than, a, than a painting, than a photograph. Uh, the photograph itself is, you know, I mean, if, if you saw it, you, you'd, from a distance, you'd say, is it a photograph or is it a watercolor or what is it? Many, many people in this exhibition walked up to this thinking it was a watercolor. That's how well done it is. You know, as we can see here in one of Alfred, Alfred's um, black and white photography, you can see how adept he, his work is to that and how um, well he can ex execute these type of pictures. This particular picture is called Before the Storm, Georgia Capon. This exhibition is not only about Alfred's photographers, photographs, and about his uh, role as an environmentalist. But it's also about the role of the Friends of Georgia Capon Foundation and what they're trying to do to improve on the ecology of Georgia Capon. 
you know, by asking people to change their septic systems out and to reduce nitrates in the water and things like that. In the gallery here, we have a number of items which are educational, which we put together with the Friends of the Georgia Capon Foundation, such as this one here. We have them posted around the gallery in various places, but I'll just read this one to you. This is about pond letting. When, 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 we open, when the pond is opened up to the ocean, since pre-colonial times, Georgia Capon has been let or open to connect with the Atlantic Ocean. While the pond can open naturally during storm events, early colonists observed the indigenous people using clamshells to open the pond. Today, the pond is opened by the trustees and freeholders of the community of the town of East Hampton. This practice can be observed at other coastal ponds, including Sag Pond, and Meacock's Bay, as well as similar coastal ponds at Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. The tidal flushing that occurs during an opening helps cleanse the pond, <clears throat> restores salinary levels, and allows for the exchange of sea life, including the American eel and blue crab, blue claw crabs, which are very prevalent in the pond. Okay? The opening is a dramatic event, and depending on the conditions, the pond can remain, remain open for a few weeks or for a few months. And this is something that has been going on for, like, like the Friends of the Georgia Pond Foundation say, it's been going on for generations and generations. And this helps clear the pond and help with the, ecolo uh, with the, with the ecology of the pond. Uh, this is a fabulous photograph by Alfred Ross of uh, Georgia Cove. Alfred doesn't live that far from here. Uh, but when we see one of Alfred's photographs today, we see it in a very positive light. And when I say that, what I'm referring to is at one time, this entire area was full with Phragmites. And we look over here, these are Phragmites over here, but Phragmites actually come from the nitrogen, built up from nitrogen in the water. And comes from like septic systems and lawns, runoff, things like that. And it, to improve the water quality there and to uh, make the environment healthy again, the Friends of the Georgia Capon Foundation was able to get this aquatic weed harvester. At one time, the, the, uh, the bacteria levels, the cyanobacteria levels, the green algae, was very, very high. And the pond was actually, had one of the highest in the, in, in the county. And today the levels are much lower, thanks to the Friends of Georgia Capon Foundation, and also to the people that are involved with the foundation, people that live on Georgia Capon, people that are you know homeowners and who are concerned about not just property values, but they're concerned about the environment. One of Alfred's favorite subjects are dragonflies and damsel flies. Until we ever had this exhibition, I never, I mean, I've heard of dragonflies, and I have heard of uh, damsel flies, but know very, very little about them. But we look at the way Alfred has almost an intimate relationship with them. If we look at, say, this trip deck here uh, of these three different Gamzel flies, we see, you can see the little hairs and the cells in the wings and just how beautiful these creatures are. And this is pretty much the way Alfred looks at them. He doesn't look at them as, as a bug or an insect, but he looks at them as an individually, as a thing, as a living thing. And I think that's one of the reasons that Alfred's photographs come to life the way they do is that he thinks, he sees nature as a living thing, a breathing thing. And so he's able to capture that and convey that to us. As he says here, he said, they come in a fantastic array of colors. And if you take time to get to know them, they have, a delight, they have delightful personalities. If you sit quietly, they will interact and move their heads around trying to view you from different perspectives, <clears throat> and then fly off for a minute or two, often returning to exactly the same spot. 
I'm evidently pleased that you have stayed just where you were. Reassured that you, wherever you are, are some kind of friendly, not threatening species. They are patient with paparazzi if you are quiet. And I say, this also says a great deal about Alfred Ross's personality. He's a very quiet, gentle human being. And I think if we look at his photography, it also reflects his wonderful personality. In my opinion, this is one of the stars of the show here. This particular image, it's a large photograph taken at sunrise. It's looking from Georgia Beach east. And the fabulous thing about it is this dramatic sunrise and the way Alfred catches this light and the graduation, the way it really looks in the morning. Such a peaceful day. It looks a summer day. You can see it's going to be a warm day. And um, it's almost like a great landscape painting, great seascape painting. However, the detail is unrivaled by anything I've ever seen. I mean, it's incredible. The way he gets the, the crowds and the color in the clouds, also the sun coming up and this spit of light. Even underneath, we see day is starting to begin. One of the favorites here at the exhibition is this photograph by Alfred titled Approaching Storm. And we see a lone surf caster, a sight that we see all the time out here at the east end of Long Island. A lone surf caster standing alone. And we get the feeling here, when you compare life to nature, how small we really are. I mean, we look at this particular photograph, we see this great low horizon line with a tremendous amount of depth. I mean, if you, we look close here, it almost looks like this could just go right into the sky. And so, I think one of the things with Alfred's photography is that he can appreciate the surf castle, but he also can appreciate the strength of nature and how big nature is and how powerful nature is compared to, uh, to, compared to humans. Perched on the ocean, Georgia Pond is a brackish coastal pond serving as a nursery for fish and a haven for wildlife. At 299 acres, it is one of the largest ponds in the town of East Hampton and a treasured scenic, environmental, and recreational resource.